Let's begin section 11.2, permutations. We started with uh, fundamentals. Counting principle. Where we had two or more sets. And what we did was we multiplied the quantities and they had it as an M times N, capital M times N. But we needed more than one set. So here, let's start off this one with uh, some uh, Starburst candies. And we have five different ones. We have a yellow, a red, pink. This is supposed to be orange. I know the color didn't come out right. And uh, we're going to call that one purple. They're all different. And in how many ways can we order uh, to eat them, assuming five or different flavors? Okay, so how would we do this? Well, we'd start with at least one of them. And then we would see the pattern of what we're doing. So if I chose yellow and then red and then pink and then orange and then purple, that would be one. But then I could use all of these guys in a different order and they'd be unique because you're talking about how would we do it in a set. So I could have yellow then uh, pink, then orange, then purple, and then red. And that's unique. And then I could go again and reorder those. Well, this is a lot of work. Well, to be honest with you, we'd have to introduce a different counting system. It is called factorial. If you want to put elements in a specific order where they're very unique, it's a factorial. So we would count them. Well, we have five factorial. And I can tell you that that is going to be five times four times three, because this is the same as times two times one. Well, if we did the math, this is 20 and this is six. Uh, so that looks like 120 ways to order five items. Well, you sure wouldn't list them all because it's too many, way too many. So uh, what can be said about this counting principle? Well, here, order is important. And, and then we have and it depends on if we use all of them or not. If all elements arranged we can use factorial. Because it's order specific, it is very important, very important. Well, I'm going to keep with that. So we're introducing permutations. So permutations are one set of elements, countable, specific, unique, um, and um, and, uh, and order is important. So we have the symbol factorial if we, that's a factorial, if we use all of the elements. And if we don't, if we use a subset, well then we have n, p, r, where n is the total elements 
in the set. And R is the size of the elements to arrange, or I should say quantity. And of course, that's called the, fact, uh, the permutation uh, counting principle. All right, so what is the purpose? To find total number of ways set or subset can be arranged. And again, order is important. So here is the uh, process for the factorial. And this is out of your textbook so that you can see that zero factorial is one. And we're going to prove that in the calculator right now. So let's introduce Uh, the steps, and I have them here. So we're going to use our 84. Uh, and I've typed them up so I won't mess up. So we're going to use a TI-84. I'm going to clear my, my uh, setup. We're going to enter the numeric value of the factorial in the home screen. So we said 5. Of the, of the starburst. And uh, then we're going to go to the math key. That's the third row, first key. Then we're moving the arrow. The, this is all the arrows sideward till we get P-R-O-B. Some calculators for space do it P-R-O, like pro. Then we notice the listings, and we're doing permutations, so we're uh, factorial, sorry. That's the exclamation point. And we have to do it on this one because it's an algorithm. And then we hit enter. And we get that 120. Now, I wrote you the 120 because we did the 5 factorial. And, and I showed you that a factorial is the number multiplied descending order till you get to 1. But we don't want to do that math. We just want to get to the answer, and we get 120 unique ways. Of ordering elements. Ordering means putting in order. All right, so we're going to do practice with the factorial first. And here we go. We have Two examples, and this is just how important this calculator is in your future math and in your present math. So here we go. I'm going to enter what I see. So I'm going to do the 20, the math, go to PROB. I'm going to do number 4 to get the factorial and enter. And I notice, oh, sorry, let me, let me clear that, sorry. Do it again. I didn't finish. 20, because it's a that's a big number. Math, P-R-O-B, and I'm going to do 4. Okay, then I'm going to hit the divide sign. And then I'm going to do 13, math, P-R-O-B, and do 4. And hit enter. And I get a giant number, but not as awful as what it was before. Uh, 390... Uh, seven zero zero eight zero zero. Okay. All right. When I was going to college, we would do twenty times nineteen times 
18 times 17 times 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 factorial and then have 13 factorial on the bottom and we would cancel that and then just stick that in our calculators because we didn't have, you know, I am old, we didn't have these calculators that can do so much math and, uh, and do it accurately. So I'm going to multiply what we have left in that numerator would help if I do it correctly, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, and 14, and enter. Did I get the absolute same thing? Yes. So that's how we did it uh, in the math classes I took, where we had these very large numbers. Um, all right, so I'm not going to do that again. I just wanted to show you how the math works. So we're going to do this next one. I have 12 math, P-R-O-B. I'm going to do number four. And then I'm going to hit the divide sign. I'm going to open parentheses, 12 minus 2, close parentheses, math, P-R-O-B. I'm going to do number four. And I have what I see, and enter. I have... 132 uh, unique ways or answers to this uh, calculation with factorials. All right, so we're going to do examples now of uh, what I need. Let me go ahead and capture this screen for, for you. and I show all of my work. There you go. So now we're going to do language and see what we can get to. Examples with language application of a factorial. You need to arrange five of your favorite books along a shelf. How many different ways can you arrange the books assuming the order of books makes a difference to you? So that would definitely be the five factorial. Let me get blue. And um, five factorial, and we know that's 120. Uh, example needing to understand the material. This is our example. There are nine performers who will uh, present at a comedy act on the weekend at a comedy club. One of the performers insists on being the last stand-up of the evening. If this performer requests to be granted, how many different ways are they to schedule the appearance? Okay, so remember what we have. We have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, well, the last one is set. In other words, we have one element that is going to just be there. So how many do we have to play with? One less. So we would have eight factorial. And we'd have... Uh, 40,320 ways to put the acts together. Together. Right. So now let's talk about the fact that sometimes there's occurrences where we have a set of stuff, but we don't want to use all of the set. We want to use a portion of it. That's a permutation. In a permutation, we have this formula. 
Now, I don't want you to do the formula. I want you to use the app key. So, what do we have? N, P, R. N is uh, total elements set. Well, the R is the size of the arrangement in that set. And usually I use the word subset. Uh, the R can equal N, but it cannot exceed N. Uh, N is the total amount we can use. R can be one less, five less, who knows, it's just whatever size that you need. All right, so now we talk about the calculator uh, usage. In the calculator, uh, we have to first uh, go to uh, read the problem, find the N, the total number of elements, and R, the size of the groupings of the set N. And then we construct the problem, NPR. Then you go on the home screen, you enter the N value, how many total elements you have. Then go to math, go over to PRB, and we're going to select two NPR. Then after that, we put in the R value and enter the product. The beauty of using the app is that you don't make a mistake using the formula. This is, a, you know, it's tough doing it. So we're going to practice this. So are you ready? All right. Here we go. Seven permutations of size five. That's what we have. Seven P five. Seven is our total number. We want seven permutation size five. All right. So I'm going to enter the seven. I'm going to hit the math key. Move to probability. Choose number two and enter the size of the set. We're arranging. And I get 2520. Right. Now we're going to do a, a five choose five in an ordering. This is the same as a factorial. Five math, P R O B, number two, and five. And we'll get that 120. And we knew that. Because I can do 5 math, P-R-O-B, because I've done it many times already. And I get the same value. All right. So what happens if I have a 0, if I don't choose any of the elements? Well, we only have one way of doing none. And we're going to prove it on this one. Ready? 5 math. P-R-O-B, and we're doing number two, and we're entering zero. And I get one. There's only one way of nothing. Okay. So now that we've gotten uh, excited about our, um, our abilities, uh, we're going to move on to problems. All right, now we're reading for context and a usage. All right, so let me make some room. Okay, here we go. Uh, a club with 13 members. So we're saying... N is 13, the total number of members in this club. Choose three office officers. Okay, choose. Pres, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. All right, so these are order specific. So we're going to use permutations. Well, how many offices do we have? Well, we've got three. 
So my R is 3. We're going to say 13P3. How many possible connections to uh, placing them as president, vice president, and uh, uh, secretary treasurer can occur in a set of 13? All right, so I'm going to put 13. Oops, sorry. It would be good if I put 13. Math, P-R-O-B. Hit number 2 and put 3 and enter. So there are 1,716 ways these guys can get these offices. So, there you have it. Pretty good, right? So now we have this one. Segment of a radio show, a disc jockey, jockey can play seven records. All right, so we have N equals seven. He can play that many. If there are, uh, oh, sorry, that's a how many, that's a size. If there are nine that he likes, right, to select from, in how many ways can the program for this segment be arranged? Well, order is important. So we're going to do a permutation of 7, I'm sorry, 9P7. All right. So how many ways? Here we go. 9 math. P-R-O-B, number 2, and 7. And we enter. And there are this many ways he can arrange to play 7 out of the 9 records. Amazing. All right, here's our last one. At a benefit concert, 12 bands have volunteered to perform, but there is only enough time for eight of the bands to play. How is the lineup possible? Of course, lineup means order is important. So we're using a permutation. So we're going to set it up as N is 12 bands, R only um, uh, 8 can perform. So we're saying 12P8. And it's huge. Look at that. One nine nine five eight four zero zero. One nine nine five eight four zero zero. There we go. Nineteen million nine hundred fifty eight thousand four hundred ways to have the band the bands uh, volunteer. Okay, so what did we learn? Okay. Learned when to apply a factorial. No, that's that exclamation point. To calculate the number of ways to arrange Set of elements. Okay, then we learned applying permutation. When a subset
it's utilized instead of all of it. All right, so we had the NPR total size of arrangement. The outcome is how many we can have. Thank you so much for listening. Again, you do your homework, uh, look at everything. I hope you paused and took good notes. Thank you for listening.